As 2017 draws to a close, it's time to take a look back and recognize the good, the bad, the almost were, and the never should have been. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the 2017 Toy Galaxy Award Show. Of all the shows we produce throughout the year, this show, the year-end award show, is by far the show that we put the most time, the most preparation, the most thought and effort into. We have carefully considered thousands of figures, dozens of manufacturers, technical innovations, pop culture significance, price, scale, availability, and fan appeal. 365 days in the making, thousands of dollars, a survey of collectors from all over the planet. This, the final product, is its own reward. Our passion for collecting action figures was the fuel that made the dream a reality. How the industry changes from year to year is determined by where collectors spend their money, and they, you, we, have made our voices heard in support of the best trend award winner, digital face printing. Developed on import figures from manufacturers like SH Figuarts, the technology is being applied to recent releases in Hasbro's Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series. The new printing process allows for more tonality and detail in the application of a painted face to an action figure, making for a much more realistic presentation, assuming it gets applied properly to the sculpted head. With any luck, 2018 will be the year we stopped complaining about cross-eyed action figures. <laughs> a lot of collectors got a second chance at cork characters and popular lines this year, figures that had been released years before or as exclusives that were getting tougher to acquire on the secondary market at reasonable prices. Pizza Spider-Man, Walgreens exclusive Punisher, Han Solo, R2-D2, there were other options out there for those characters, but reissues guaranteed the legitimate article even if it meant some cosmetic changes or a different assortment of accessories. The best reissue award goes to Marvel Legends Ares. He was originally released in 2008 as a Walmart exclusive Build-A-Figure. You had to buy eight different figures and it was not a strong lineup. Kang, Guardian, Ultimate War Machine, Scarlet Spider, Heroes Reborn, Iron Man. Over the years, the secondary market price climbed to $300 before knockoffs started to muddy the waters. Hasbro made a few cosmetic changes to the paint and sculpt and gave him a new axe. Some would even argue that the new figure is better than the original release, but the important part was that it could be bought for the first time ever for only $20. On the other end of the spectrum, no figure is good if you can't find the thing to add to your collection. The worst trend award goes to exclusives that don't get stocked. Oh, Toys R Us has a Cyclops and Jean Grey 2-pack? Hope I see one in my local store. Walgreens has a Punisher, a Human Torch, a Spider-Ham Dorbs? Maybe someday. Mine still has Jamie Foxx's Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man back in 2014. Is anyone still looking for Kylo Ren? I can appreciate a store wanting to build loyalty by having unique product, but in a market where non-exclusives are already hard enough to come by, exclusives are absolutely maddening. <laughs> exclusives that never make it to the shelves are a reason to just walk away from this hobby altogether. Best Revival Award goes to Boss Fight Studios' Bucky O'Hare. Maybe you knew about Bucky back in the 90s, maybe you thought it was part of the Ninja Turtles. Either way, Bucky O'Hare was big enough to have an action figure line, comics, video games, and a 13-episode animated series with a theme song that, once heard, will play on loop in your head forever. Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Boss Fight Studios acquired the license to produce 4-inch scale figures in 2016 and released Wave 1 with Bucky O'Hare and First Mate Jenny in 2017. Dead Eye Duck and a Toad Trooper are on the way. Great news for fans who have waited a long time for an update to a 90s favorite. Speaking of long waits, the longest wait for a pre-order award goes to Hot Toys Avengers Age of Ultron Hulkbuster. Originally announced in March of 2015, before the movie was even released, with an expected ship date of first quarter 2016, finished pieces finally began shipping out fourth quarter of 2017, over a year late. As of this video, it's almost 2018, my local comic shop still hasn't received the piece they ordered. Hopefully all orders will be filled before the suit actually appears on screen again in Infinity War, May of 2018. The What Are You Even Doing award goes to DC Collectibles, because what are you even doing? You start lines, you cancel lines, you announce things, you don't follow through, you change sculpts without telling anyone. Did Superman and Batman from DC Films line ever even ship? Did I blink and miss them? Icons is dead. In its place is Icons again? I don't even know what's going on. You have so many lines, so many styles, and on top of that, Mattel is out there competing with you, doing the same thing you're doing, sometimes releasing the same figures. You're tearing me apart! You're tearing me apart! 
You got Tammy Pond, Lisa! The award for biggest missed opportunity goes to Hasbro for completely fumbling Battlefront and Battlefront 2. When Battlefront dropped in November of 2015, Hasbro released a repainted Shock Trooper figure that was supposed to be available at launch, but didn't really work out that way for most collectors. I'm guessing a lot of you still don't have one. I saw it once, I bought it once. In the meantime, Hasbro could have been producing all kinds of accessory packs to supplement their growing line of troopers and could have focused on getting new troopers into each wave released as the game continued to be popular. Weapons, backpacks, hats, helmets, all kinds of gear that could have been released in accessory packs to encourage army building to customize figures you already had and really ensure the long-term stability of the line. I know that sounds like an unnecessary thing to say about a Star Wars brand, but it's the truth. And they're making the same mistake with Battlefront 2. More troops, more gear, no representation in the toy aisle. Sometimes figures get released and you just go, what? Why? The Head Scratcher Award goes to Playmates for mixing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with everything. I know it's part of their history. During the original run of the Turtles back in the 90s, there were all kinds of different themed releases, from different outfits like Baseball Player or Cowboy to actual licensed releases like Star Trek or Universal Monsters. That doesn't make it any less head-scratching when the new turtles get mixed together with the Ghostbusters, right down to having likenesses that are intended to be a mix of the turtle and the real actor? Turtles with hair is, uh, it's weird. The best Build-A-Figure award goes to Mattel's DC Multiverse King Shark. Regardless of his significance or lack thereof within the DC universe, dude has a shark head and that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And this particular version of King Shark actually has two different shark heads that you can use, regular or hammerhead. I feel like I might not be making myself clear about why something is cool. It's like, you can see this, right? Big guy, shark head? I, I don't know, maybe I need to read more books so I can learn more words, but I feel like I pretty much nailed it. I mentioned the shark head and, and that's it. <laughs> Best exclusive goes to NECA's San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 30th anniversary box set. What a thing. What a series of things placed into a box and put up for sale in extremely limited quantities. All four turtles, Shredder, Krang, and two foot soldiers, this set gives you the absolute core of a turtles collection with cartoon styling and a plethora of accessories. It's the batch of figures you wish you could have purchased back in 1988, like with elbows and stuff. Bad thing about this set is that it was an exclusive and that it was limited to 5,000 pieces, so that meant it was on the pricey side and hard to acquire. The good news is, with a little patience, as of the end of 2017, you can still get it for just above the $200 original price on the secondary market. And the final award, the no one else even attempted it award, goes to Hasbro for Marvel Legends Spider-Man Homecoming Vulture. Lots of collectors mocked Hasbro for making a Build-A-Wings wave when the images first debuted ahead of the release of the film. What no one realized was that Hasbro would be the only company to step up and produce a set of fully functional wings for any MCU Vulture action figure. Not only did Hasbro make Vulture with wings, but they made him at like four different scales. Nope, Funko Pops and Lego don't count. Massex, Figuarts, Revoltec, Marvel Select, Figma, Hot Toys, none of them even tried to put out a vulture. Shame. Shame on all of you. You want to run with the biggest dog? You want to take a shot at the king and then you disappear when an opportunity like this comes up? On top of your embarrassing performance against Hasbro, you all owe Michael Keaton an apology. 365 days of action figures and accessories. Lots of good, lots of bad, probably a bit more Star Wars than anyone was really asking for. A collector's work is never done, but we can almost close the book on 2017, and we will next week with the 10 best action figures of 2017. And then after that, we'll get ready for whatever 2018 has to offer. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, share this video with your action figure collecting pals. If you're in the position to help, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Once again, thank you to everyone on the action figure subreddit and our Patreon that offered nominees for the award show. Your input is always appreciated, even though we had to discard like 90% of it. There's only so many awards, you know? Who's paying for this stuff? Who's giving out all these trophies? <laughs> Cut.